Hello and welcome to this Google Docs tutorial. Today we're going to look at how to use forms in Google Docs. Before we start, let's talk a little bit about what forms could be good for. Forms are great for doing any type of surveys or collecting information, and these can be done from either staff or collecting information from students in the form of worksheets. So we'll actually start by creating a new doc by going over to the left side, create new, and choose the form. Now it's going to open up a window as our form editor. Up at the top you'll see some buttons. The first button you'll see is the Add Item button. This button is important because it allows us to select the type of questions that we're going to be adding to our survey or to our form. The next button you'll see is the Theme button and we'll get to this a little bit later as we finish our Google form. And the rest of the buttons are pretty much the same too. Email, see responses, more action, and save are all buttons that we're going to use later when we're done completing this form. The two checkboxes underneath our toolbar on top are actually pretty important. The first checkbox says require sd25.org sign-in to view this form. Now what this is, is it will require anybody within the Arlington Heights School District 25 Google Docs account, so anybody who has a Google Docs account, and will make them sign in. If they don't have one or can't get in, they won't be able to view the form. This is good for any kind of potentially confidential information or information that we don't want viewable to the public. So if you're sending out something that may have some sensitive information or information that you don't want to be seen, this may be a good idea to actually check the require sd25.org sign-in. The second button is automatically collect respondents sd25.org username. If they are already signed in, there is an option to collect their username. Again, this might be important when looking to collect information from specific people. But if you're putting out a survey or you're putting out a form to gather information, having that name attached may not necessarily be what you're looking for. Or you can accomplish this by actually creating a form question for name and then allowing them to type this in. These two options are important because if you're going to be sending out the form to people outside of the district or potentially to students, it's important that we don't require that they have one of these logins because a majority of our parents obviously will not have a login to this Google Docs and many of our students will not as well. So it's important to make sure that those are unchecked and they are by default. The second field you'll see is the title field for our survey. So we will call this Staff Technology Survey. And then there's also a box for help text, and help text is any text that you want to put in that may explain either what you're looking to get out of the survey or form, or things that may help them in answering. Right now we're just going to go ahead and leave that blank. The first thing you'll see down here in this orangish box is the first question and it's labeled sample question one. So we're gonna go ahead and change that. This actually is the question, the question title is the question. So we'll go ahead and change that to our first question. And what is your technology goal for this school year? Help text is basically a field that gives them help on that individual question. So if you're looking to prompt them or give them some help in terms of answering it, this is the place to do it. And now right now the question type is text. And while we are looking for a text response, probably we're going to be getting some answers that are going to be bigger than just this little text box. So we're actually going to choose from question type, we're going to choose paragraph text. And now you see there's a field for a longer answer. Now this is valuable because people who might try to type longer answers into those short boxes may want to go back and see what they've already typed. So by allowing them to have the paragraph text, you give them the opportunity to see more of what they're typing. Down here you'll see an option for make this question required. Basically if you want them to complete the survey, they need to complete this answer. And because we do, we'll go ahead and make this required and then click done. Now next you'll see this sample question too in just a little box. So we want to edit this question. 
we're going to click on the pencil and now you see my question editor but instead of doing a text question let's actually create a scale so the question will be how comfortable are you using technology in the classroom and again instead of text we're actually going to make it a scale now here you'll see the scale can be anywhere from 1 to 5 and you can change how big of a scale you want it to be. It would be 1 through 10, 1 through 9, or any number in between. For now, we'll stick with the 1 through 5. As a 1, we'll click Not Very Comfortable. And for 5, we'll click Very Comfortable. And we will make this question required. And then we'll click Done. And now you see we've actually created a rating scale, so 1 through 5. The last question we'll add is we'll go to Add Item now, and we want to add a multiple choice. And the question we'll ask is, what is your favorite type of computer? And now we see it's a multiple choice and we're going to actually add others down here. You'll see that there's only room for option one and then a second option. We want to add three options. And the first is Apple, next is Dell, and then the last one is HP. We can also include an other option and we'll do that by just we'll do that by just leaving it there. And we'll make this required. Go ahead and click Done, and you'll see Apple, Dell, HP, and Other. And now you see we have a, the beginnings of a pretty decent form. Now this again would be some sort of a survey. If you wanted to do a worksheet or do some sort of project for students, you can do, depending on the project you're looking to create, you can create multiple types of forms. You could take a worksheet, and instead of the answers on the worksheet, you can actually have questions show up like a blank text where they have multiple choice, text box, so you have different options. You can also collect information from your students in terms of surveys or interest inventories. So now that we've created our basic form, let's go ahead and style it. And again, you don't need to style your form, but if you'd like to, simply click on the theme button. And you can choose any of the pre-made forms built into the Google Docs. And we'll go ahead and click something pretty straightforward. We'll click the blue arrow theme. And this is what our survey is going to look like. Click Apply. And then when I'm done, I'll make sure it's saved, and right now it is. And so now that we're done, we can actually view our published spreadsheet here. So if I click on the link in the bottom, it'll take me to this page. This is actually a live link. And this is the link that you can use to send out to, to either your students by putting it on your web page, to parents, or to other staff members, simply by copying and pasting the URL into an email or into a link on your website. So let's go ahead and actually fill out the form and see what it looks like on the back end of the site. So when it asks, what is your technology goal for the school year? I would like to create a podcast for my classroom. How comfortable are you using technology? I'll go ahead and click a four. And then what is your type, favorite type of computer? We'll click Apple and click Submit. And here you see a pop-up that says, Thank you, your response will appear in my spreadsheet. So what we've done is we've taken that information and it's put itself into a spreadsheet in Google Docs. So let's actually go back to the form and let's do one more just so you see what it looks like with multiple entries. And so what is your school for the year? I would like to use digital storytelling project in my classroom. 
How comfortable are you using technology? We'll put a 2. And what is your favorite type of computer? We'll pick HP, even though that's wrong. And we'll click Submit. All right, now we've got two entries into our spreadsheet. So let's take a look at what our spreadsheet actually looks like. We'll minimize this window, and now we'll go back to our Google Docs homepage. On the top, you'll see our staff technology survey. Go ahead and click on that. And now you see the spreadsheet for our Google, spre or our Google form. You see on the left-hand side the two entries that we have, as well as their answers. So you see I would like to create a podcast, and I would like to do digital storytelling. And you also see the text fields for the comfort levels and Apple and HP. <clears throat> now, this is good if you're just collecting text information, and it could be great if you're collecting text information from students. But if you're just wanting to see results, and you want to see them in a graphical form, go up to the Form button and show Summary of Responses. Now, Google's actually taken and put, in, put into a graphic interface that says your technology goals. And again, those are mostly text, so that's not going to turn up very well. But in our multiple choice and our rating scales, you can see how comfortable we are using technology. Our two respondents, two and four. And you can also see in a pie chart, what is your favorite type of computer? And on the right-hand side, we'll have the numbers. So if you're looking to do any kind of classroom assessment or classroom survey, you can definitely find the results using this summary. And again, this is just a brief overview of what forms can do for your classroom or for staff development. It's an extremely powerful tool and relatively easy to use. And again, one of the best parts about this, pro this Google Doc or Google Forms is it allows multiple editors but it also allows you to take this information now and either take it into a Word document or you can export it into a PDF and it gives you a lot of options of what you can do with this information. And again, if you have more questions, make sure to contact your either one of your BTAs, TTAs, or tech facilitators in your building. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial uh, for Google Docs and Google Forms and you can find a use for it in your classroom.